seeing if they can hear us. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Now oh. you can hear us. Oh, oh yeah, okay. they can hear us. There okay. we go. All right, we're going to start the show in just a second here. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. All right. Mm -hmm. Here we go. To the intro one more time. Now, I don't hear the intro, but <laughs> no. that's okay. <laughs> but you just talked over the intro. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Happy Hour. Take two. We're back. Take two. <laughs> you know, this, uh, just, I'm Jared. Yeah, yeah. That's, it. that's who he is. I'm Sherry. <laughs> and in the box below, who are you? I'm Britton Watkins, right. the Xeno linguist who makes up the languages with the lore team. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't you do your uh, uh, do, do your full intro one more time? It's, it's for, for the people they can actually hear you now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there were there were some technical glitches, and as soon as this show is over, I'm adding a new word for glitch to the dictionary because I am the Xeno linguist, mm -hmm. the consultant who works with um, all of the nice folks at Star Citizen who are inventing all of the non-human alien worlds and languages and all of the other fun stuff that goes with alien worlds. True. Uh, I'm a conlanger, a person who invents languages, and a documentarian about conlanging. So um, I've been working on this for a while now, and it's a load of fun. So today we're going to talk about Wuxian, about the Xi'an language. Wuxian? Wuxian. Washan, Washan. Washan. All right, and Sherry Hyber, you are the archivist here for Clanbury Games. Why don't you tell the folks right. for posterity, since mm -hmm. this will be on YouTube forever again, okay. what it is you do. Well, I am, as Jared said, the archivist here at Cloud Imperium Games. I work with the lore team uh, in the development of the Galactopedia. I am the contact person for alien languages, and I do a lot of maintenance on our internal wiki to keep the game design documents in uh, relatively readable order. Yes, you do. You 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 you're 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 the person who keeps everything mm -hmm. kind of organized here. There's there's no there's no department, at least in this studio. I can't speak for the studios, but mm -hmm. this that doesn't go through you at some point. Sherry, how do I organize yeah. this? How I, do I? I definitely I talk to every studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, I am a disco. I am the Xi'an word for glitch. <laughs> oh, there we That's go. A good That's good one. I just decided what it was going to be. <laughs> or Red One or something. I don't know. Red One. All right. So uh, if you've never watched a Happy Hour before, a uh, Happy Hour interview is where we have our esteemed guests who are working on the uh, Xi'an language uh, here to answer questions uh, from you, uh, the Star Citizen viewer. Uh, we take questions from two different locations. Uh, we are, of course, broadcasting on Twitch and mm -hmm. YouTube right now. We can take questions from the Twitch live chat. We also take questions live from our from Spectrum, our dedicated communication platform up on robertspaceindustries.com. So you can submit your questions in either place. Please preface your question with the word question in mm -hmm. capital letters surrounded by brackets. That's just going to help me and my guys you know, separate your questions from all the other conversation that's going on. Um, I'm going to say right off the bat, though, I'm going to start you off with an easy one, Britton. Uh, while you were doing your intro, somebody asked, are you the only person working on languages for Star Citizen? Um. As far as I know, yes, <laughs> I'm the only person working on language. I mean, I, the, but the more complex answer to that is that a lot of the language stuff is, you know, very culturally relevant. So there's a lot of interaction with Sherry and other mm -hmm. people on the lore team. And um, eventually there are going to be a lot of people making contributions to the language from the community, too. So I am the kind of nexus, I guess you'd say, for the alien languages as they relate to the alien cultures but um it's it, you know we're kind of all in it together at some point too so yeah. right now i guess i'm the go-to guy mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah on the uh, lore side brit always brings up really good questions about the development of the language um and he brings culture into the equation because uh as we all know uh you can't really develop a language without knowing a bit about the culture of the people that it's coming from so uh, we, when Britt asked us about, well, how do they have relationships with each other? What are their, what's their family-like life? What's, what's their careers like? We had to come up with all kinds of stuff that we hadn't really um, put a lot of development in before. And so just from this development of Xi'an language, we have had a huge push forward on who the Xi'an are as people. Yeah, I'm always poking a lot. I'm like, what about this? That's what true. about that? <laughs> what about that? 
uh, one of the questions came in. Uh, somebody asked if we've seen the the new uh, the, the 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 makeshift Google Translate that somebody was creating for uh, for Xi'an. Uh, not only have we seen it, we actually highlighted highlighted it on Citizens of the Stars this week. Mm -hmm. it, it, I believe it was MVP uh, on Monday's broadcast. Uh, I used it to cheat a little bit in mm -hmm. when, my, when I jumped into the Spectrum <laughs> chat. I, I jumped I jumped into Spectrum chat. Uh, Earlier this week and whatnot, uh, after you told me, I, I, I didn't know there was one because I was busy with CitizenCon. I'm like, oh, right. there's a <laughs> So I jumped in there and everybody's like, uh, 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 um, uh, and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know any of this all night. And I found this thing. I'm like, yes. I'm like, hello. Hi. So, so yes. Jared, no Jared, my tutoring rates are really cheap. So, <laughs> you know. Yes, but when you, met, when, you, when you times that by the sheer hours that I will take it's not so uh, mm -hmm. it's not it's not not so inexpensive all right so um, while we're getting some questions coming in I wanted to talk a little bit about the process of developing the language mm -hmm. um, I, I, now we've released three videos on our YouTube channel uh, already uh, uh, made by uh, the wonderful uh, Britton Watkins mm -hmm. here um, de detailing the uh, Okay, maybe not wonderful, but you know, not pretty good. <laughs> uh, uh, better than mediocre. He's fabulous. Come on, way better, way better than me, Britain. Way better than me. Uh, I, I can't create a language. Mm -mm. You know? I can barely speak this one. Uh, a, a, a wonderful introduction to, to the, the basic core principles of, of and concepts of the Xi'an language. Um, one of the things that I uh, that that caught my attention when I watched in the video was the uh, was the vertical uh, the vertical writing that matches the mm. vertical nature of Xi'an. Like we, we knew that Xi'an ships were vertical. We had that from mm -hmm. from from our ship design from team. The and, yeah. and it was it was really interesting to me to to see that incorporated into the language and, and further in the culture. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the process of developing the language? Um, I'd like to say right out that um, the direction for Xi'an to be more a more vertically centered people came like it was one of the foundational ideas behind them that came straight from Chris Roberts himself. So his direction to Lore and to Brit was to develop a culture and a language that centered around the idea of verticality. And that the vertical, I mean, again, language, human language, humanoid language is essentially linear, right? So. Mm -hmm. It can go from right to left or left to right or mm -hmm. theoretically bottom to top, although that doesn't happen very often, and top yeah. to bottom. <laughs> so um, so we, we looked at, okay, how can we make it vertical but also then have it play nicely on the interwebs mm -hmm. and how can it fit okay into most of our – Roman language, you know, Roman alphabet-based mm -hmm. stuff that's going to be written horizontally. And the way to do that was to look at the model that the Koreans took when they created their alphabet many mm -hmm. hundreds of years ago. And um, so it works in blocks that can go from left to right or from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And theoretically, it could go from right to left, but that's not <clears throat> as common, mm -hmm. again, on the Internet and using the other mechanisms that everybody is enjoying now to, to use the language. So we did these blocks that, that every syllable fits into a block. And there was a model for this in human languages already. Uh, certainly, if you're Korean and you're learning to read Xi'an, you're in the same boat that everybody else is because the letters don't look anything like Korean letters. But mm. the system, the idea, is similar to the way mm. uh, Korean letters fit into syllable blocks. Mm -hmm. okay. I took two, two years of German in high school, and I can, I can say most of the alphabet and count to ten. That's all I can do. In the, <laughs> but when I was watching your video, I, I, I sat down and I was like, all right, I'm going I'm to I'm try to give this a go before, uh, before the show. And uh, uh, one of the things that Again, one of the other things that, that, that really stood out to me was only nine verbs. Am I remember that, remembering that correct? Only nine verbs and no conjugations? Uh, yes. I mean, there, mm. there are nine core verbs. There are a couple of things uh, like the verb a becomes a, a, which means resemble. So I guess technically you could argue that that might be a separate verb. But, to, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the formalized language, the way – we imagine she and children learning it in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're taught that they're nine verbs, and they come in six different flavors depending on how polite or impolite you are trying to be at the time. So <laughs> it's not just nine words. It turns into a kind of matrix if you're being mm -hmm. culturally of. correct. But, um, but it's still a very limited number of, of verbs, what we would actually call a verb, a thing that behaves like a verb in the language, yes. Mm -hmm. 
some of the questions have started to come in now. Um, uh, one of the questions says, some sounds are missing in the language, like D, V, etc. Okay, or D and V. Uh, will you add them in the future? Um, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, those sounds, um, the specific ones you mentioned, will not be added to the proper language, the language that is the kind of textbook written language. Um, they won't be added because that's not the way languages, humanoid languages, actually behave. However, um, eventually we'll be talking a little bit more about the service dialect, one of the mm -hmm. other major languages that's spoken across the Xi'an Empire. Mm. And it does include a lot of those sounds, um, both D and, and V, um, <clears throat> that enable the Xi'an, who tend, almost all of them are completely bilingual because they all do military service. Mm -hmm. So that means that they're able to pronounce a lot more things than, than show up in the proper language. So if you have a name, for example, that includes a D or a V, like Dave, for yep. example, there will be a, na <laughs> a way to... A way random to example. Ra completely <laughs> random example. Um, it will be able, you'll be able to get close to pronouncing that in a way that you would recognize it as a native speaker of Dave, mm -hmm. and the Xi'an would also be able to to recognize that, oh, most of the sounds in your name as a human are coming more from our service dialect than they are coming from our proper language. Mm -hmm. So um, the story of these this phonological unfolding will continue maybe even next week, although I won't give any way any concrete spoilers. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Th does that service dialogue ha uh, dialect have a name? Is that um, it's yeah, it's wa yeah. It's mm -hmm. the it's the service or the kind of the word hath means a little bit more military. So the the unification of the empire included this evolution of a dialect that they speak when they're in military service. So mm -hmm. instead of calling it wa xian, they call it wa hath, which means the the language of the service or the language of originally that meant military. Right. To notice the difference as Britain speaks the difference between you're like yeah yep that's right yep yep and I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is all new Every, to, this is all new to Jared <laughs> everybody starts somewhere Jared yeah everybody starts somewhere uh, another question from the chat is Xi'an based off languages from around the world as I recognize them this person recognizes them uh, specifically some from Icelandic hmm. um yes and no. Let me think if there's anything in there specifically from Icelandic. Well, there's the there's the th sound that mm -hmm. English has also that is really beautiful in Icelandic. I was in Iceland for the first time last year and um, was found the language really beautiful. I'd mm -hmm. never been around it before. But it's not it's not based um, it's not based specifically on any single human language. It's there are many ideas from the language. Yeah. especially the phonology that come mm. from Asia that are inspired directly or indirectly by a kind of mashup of what happens with pitch in Japanese and tone in Thai and Chinese. Um, there are some grammatical structures. I mean, even the way some of the verbs work, where there's a verb and then you put a content word after it in order to make it mean a broader meaning. Um those there are several human languages that do that. Um, one of one of them is Japanese. It has this thing where it says something or other suru, and that means to do something or other. And oh, yeah. that that structure exists in Xi'an the other way around, where you say o and then something or other that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, so I just will be putting into the dictionary soon um, o yata. Yata meaning cloth, and <laughs> oyata would mean that you're you're weaving cloth essentially. You're taking fibers and weaving them together. So there are some parallels from human languages, but um, but not the word yata, for example, didn't come from Chinese or Thai or Japanese. Yata may be a word. I mean, internet video came from well, an internet video I watched in like yata 2000. is a Japanese word. Yata, yata, yata. yes, of yeah, course, but not word. but not yata. But not yata. I mean, I mean, yata could be a word in Japanese. It could be a word in True. 
in any language almost because the sounds in Yatta are so basic. Mm-hmm. But um, but I'm not aware. That's not like a Bantu word that means cloth. No, I don't. I don't take Probably words not. that have meanings mm-hmm. in in other languages and then mm-hmm. adapt them directly into mm-hmm. into Shan. Now that's not to say that there aren't some tricky, funny, Easter eggy kinds of things going on where I take a word and it means something completely different in Xi'an. That mm-hmm. that does happen and could happen and could continue to happen because <laughs> I think that, you know, this is fictional mm-hmm. and while I want it to be realistic and I want the language to be fully grammatical and usable, um, it should also be lots of fun. So I don't see any reason that it can't be full of Easter eggs and other fun mm-hmm. stuff. What's the uh, to do verb in Xi'an? What's uh, Xi'an? <laughs> to do to do something mm-hmm. is is specifically all. It's just the sound just all. So, yeah, and but if you sorry, yeah. Oh no! One of the jokes that we had when I was taking Japanese classes in high school and college was to put the to do verb at the end of anything, just for fun. Oh, and that happens mm-hmm. a lot in Japanese too. I mean, mm-hmm. you get these new. You get these innovations mm-hmm. um, that come up in in Japanese too, where they take an English word pronounced in Japanese and stick "suru" after it. In yeah, Japanese. and then it's a new verb and it's, <laughs> or a well, new that's, word. <laughs> that's the way Xi'an builds half of its mm-hmm. verbs. I mean, you know, half half of the the things that you would use as a verb in a sentence. Um, it just it sticks things together. So mm-hmm. um, they don't conjugate. The verbs don't have endings on them like. I go, she goes, mm-hmm. with a Z sound on the end of it, spelled with an S. I don't know why, but um, anyway. Um, they don't fun. conjugate like that. But, but <laughs> you uh, don't know why other, you're the one who makes it. Lots of other, no, no, in English, in I don't English. know exactly why we're still sticking with spelling goes as G-O-E-E-S when it could be spelled G-O-Z. Mm-hmm. <laughs> goes be spelled G O Z easily, oh, no. but but I know. Oh no! Well, again, we're, we're in historical linguistics already, and a little bit beyond the scope of our chat today. But mm-hmm. um, anyway, let's but, pull pull it back in. Pull it back. In. <laughs> pull it back in. <laughs> I, thank you. I just want to say thank you to Disky and Neurocaster for understanding my joke earlier. All right. So, what else do we have here? I, I am. I, I. You guys. Are you? Yeah, Are you um, lost? Yeah, just I, I'm. Re- I'm realizing. You know what? I don't have any affinity for language at all. Um, uh, now, in, in working with the the Xi'an language, uh, you mentioned earlier how that also uh, because of the questions that Britain was asking, mm-hmm. what, that also helped us to develop the Xi'an culture. Yes. So much more. Uh, what? What? Why don't we talk a little bit about that now? Uh, about about what we know about the Xi'an culture now, and maybe if we can, a little mm-hmm. bit about what we're thinking about moving towards. At all. Sure. Or exploring. Um, anyway. One of the things he really pushed us toward would be to developing a Xi'an model for interpersonal relationships. So, um, family, romantic relationships, uh, anything you can think of, like professional, sexual, whatever, um, and. One of the things we really dug down into was to figure out how um, Xi'an would approach the idea of romance. Um, because as Britt pointed out, that's something that I'm sure that the players want to know about. Because, you know, if you're reading about them, writing fiction, figuring out how they interact with each other, you have to know a l- at least a little bit about that. And um, because of the way their family works and the way they reproduce, um, the idea of sex is not really related to romantic relationships for Xi'an. Mating is just, it's some, you know how like Vulcans do pawn far every seven years? Boy, do I. <laughs> I've seen it in a video. <laughs> it's sort of like that. Like mating doesn't really have anything to do with romance. What, mat- what matters within their culture is deep, long interpersonal relationships. And so Xi'an will normally have, I'd say around two or three constant romantic partners that they choose to spend their lives with. And they kind of develop their inner personal family around that little clutch um, uh, and that most of them will stick together. Like if, if they really like someone, this is, you know how we get married to one person, they kind of get married to no. three people <laughs> I don't. and they may, it may or may not last their entire lives. But the idea is that it's something that's not entered into lightly. Um, it's something that is supposed to be lifelong and you spend your time, you know, 
helping your partner and living your life with them. And uh, because of Brit, we were able to develop that as a team and lore. Yeah, they their idea of family, their word for family, Kahai, is does not equate directly to what what we have in in human culture, even several hundred years in the future. Mm -hmm. So, so the word, I mean, if we were talking about, if they were asking us about our family, they would only have the term Kahai to use to talk about it. But it would be, it would be, again, you're, you're kind of almost there in, in understanding each other culturally when you're using a word like that where there's no exact equivalent. Mm -hmm. But it, it's been a lot of fun to figure out where they do have exact parallels with us. You know, I mean, if you're a truck driver on a Xi'an world, you, it's just like being a truck driver anywhere else in the verse, you know. But if you're starting to talk about your family or the kinship terms, I mean, the because of the fact that the, the mating process and the, the society being matriarchal and really the mothers and the grandmothers only mm -hmm. being um, super important in any kind of, you know, genetic history or yeah. your, your, your genealogy, you know, your, you, there's no, there aren't any real fathers on the, on the genealogical tree. You know, you're just dealing with who your mother and your great grandmother and your great great grandmother and your great 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 grandmother are they live so long mm -hmm. that you can have multiple you know maternal grandmother um people back on your tree and you still know them mm -hmm. you know it goes back generations and generations even during your lifetime yeah so <clears throat> so there are all kinds of interesting things about the kinship system and their terms uh for mother and father because there is a biological father of course mm -hmm, um right. but they're but they don't conform directly to our ideas of mother and father and they have different diminutive terms and different names for different members of the piahai because you could have a sibling who is not your biological sibling that could happen very easily in a piahai oh, they're yes. all of these like yeah, quasi sibling like step step brothers and step sisters the only word we have mm -hmm. for it is step but that doesn't our when we stick stepsister on sister, yeah. you know, step on sister, it doesn't mean exactly the same thing to us that it would mean right. to them because the biological nature of it is not so important. No, no. It's it's all about the interpersonal relationships and far, yeah. far less about biology than like we a lot of our family terms are related to who is your biological parent, who's your biological mother. But they don't care too much about that and and this isn't to say that they don't have um, male Xi'an role models in their lives like within oh, the right. yeah within the Kyahai they have um, the romantic partners of their mother or like aunties and uncles who are pretty much the cultural equivalent to fathers that we would right, have exactly yeah yeah but you could easily end up with two of them for example yes, I mean absolutely you could have a mom and two dads or two moms or three moms and one dad mm -hmm. who's not always there because he's a part you know, he's he's technically a part of a different line, so right. you don't see him all the time. Mm -hmm. So there are all kinds of cultural things that go on, and those need to have a reflection in the language. And that's one area in language where we do get very specific things going on. You mm -hmm. know, we do get very different things from what we would have in English or what you'd have in French um, <clears throat> going on because they do have very, very different systems, very mm -hmm. different relationships. And that was the section of our show dedicated to Xi'an shippers. There you go. You got everything you need to know. Right? Write your fan fictions. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, all right, I got lost. Mm -hmm. uh, another question from the chat. Uh, how much consideration for mouth anatomy was given when it came to choosing available, f uh, uh, what happens that? What's that? Phonins? 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 The phoning, the phonology, phonemes. yeah, the sounds oh. of the language. There you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, we had to make some decisions mm -hmm. early on based on some timelines that I won't go into. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we, we decided, and, and Josh Herman has humorously brought this up before, that, oh, lips. they're going to have to have lips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they have M's, ma. You can't they really do. make a, a correct ma sound without lips. So, um, so 
we are going to continue to factor that into the other languages as they're created moving forward. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, a kind of fully formed, fully rigged Xi'an uh, individual mm -hmm. mouth, face, uh, vocal tract was not available at the time that some of the language got made up. But in the future, uh, I hope with some of the other uh, scenarios, we'll, we'll know more about their physiology mm -hmm. before I start applying phonology to, to the, the languages. So um, it's somewhat of a chicken and an egg thing. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, we decided the chicken would have to have lips. <laughs> There's your quote. There's your quote, Reddit. Lips over beaks. Uh, another question for the chat. In the Xi'an Empire, are there multiple languages similar to humanity? Or is it more just the unified? We've talked about two, the, the service dialect and whatnot. So are there more than one language? Um, I, yes. I mean, I cannot tell you what the names of all the rest of them are yet. There's still a Dave. lot of world building going on. Dave language. Um, Dave language. Th there could be a Xi'an world in which they could very, very fluently pronounce Dave, that mm -hmm. is possible. Um, at this point, the Dave language is not fully invented or fleshed out, um, but it, it is theoretically as possible. They have a, a gigantic history, which we have thanks in large part to you know who is sitting there right oh, there yeah, on the yeah. other side of the screen. So they have a very long history. They've inhabited multiple worlds. Um, so yes, I imagine there would be lots and lots of languages. But at this point, mm -hmm. um, we're focusing on scope, and first we're focusing on getting the proper language fully fleshed mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And while we're doing that, we're throwing in some spice here and there um, from the service dialect. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah, it's a very common uh, occurrence mm -hmm. in in Star Citizen, it's 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 uh, and, and it's human nature really. It's, mm -hmm. You you, st you start show you start work on one thing, and then people are like, oh, what about this other thing? What, what about, about this, this other thing? thing? It's like, let, let us finish, yeah. finish this one. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it but it's a practical thing too. Absolutely. Inventing a language, especially the process of fleshing out the lexicon, that is all the words that are in the dictionary. That is a really long, involved process. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who invent languages who just write a little algorithm or they create their own custom app on their iPad mm -hmm. to That's generate, like they, they just generate, they'll generate 10,000 words. You know, they'll take, they'll take a list of, of English vocabulary and then they will just go, okay, computer, make up all the words. And that, that works great if all you're doing is trying to prove a concept for a language that's kind of grammatically weird, for example. I mean, mm -hmm. you could do that. But when you're d deciding that, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter culturally who your father is, all of a sudden, all those words that you would generate for father and grandfather and uncle and all these other things, they wouldn't make a lot of sense for this alien culture. So we can't do that. We need to look at how the Xi'an culture actually works and be very careful about building terms. So we don't do any kind of automated process like that. I, I, I don't use any automated process like that other than I often take an Excel spreadsheet or some other kind of spreadsheet mm -hmm. and I build out all the legal sounds that you can have in the language. Somebody asked earlier about V's and D's being missing. Mm -hmm. There is no language on earth anyway that has all the sounds of all the languages in it. It does That doesn't exist. Part of what defines a language yeah. is what's <laughs> missing from it. Yeah, well, Jared, you know, you you and your iPad can go off and invent something really mm -hmm. amazing and hard to pronounce. But all there are coach. the syllables, all the there pronunciations. Are, there are languages that have lots and lots of sounds. English has a lot of sounds compared to Japanese. Mm -hmm. Almost every language has a lot of sounds compared to Hawaiian, for example. Hawaiian has a very, very constrained, um, a very, very constrained phonological palette, mm -hmm. but that makes it seem very Hawaiian. You know, everything is just consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. And that gives it its character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did put some tricky, you know, THL and a KR and a KL in Xi'an that you might not necessarily expect to occur in a, in a language that has the rest of the phonology that it has. I didn't. But 
you, I, I'm sure you did it. So, um, so we are doing a few kind of tricky, possibly linguistically implausible things. But again, this is fictional and it should be fun and we should be allowed to have fun with it. So mm-hmm. um, we cannot put every sound in. You're not going to get all of the, the clicks from South Africa in there, for example. That's not going to happen in the Xi'an language. Oh, wow. Sorry. Sorry. Um, that's not to say that there might not be some other other culture that exists in the verse that True. doesn't have clicks. But um, but it, it's better, I think, experientially, and it's more realistic if Xi'an doesn't have all the possible sounds that might happen in mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. So I'm going to combine two questions that came in. Oh. Uh, do Xi'an <coughs> have art or music? Yes. And do Xi'an sing? Yes. Oh, man, this is a great question. Um, I don't want to answer it fully today because I'd rather we save it. But uh, we came up with a way, like, what would be considered the most culturally cool way of singing to the Xi'an, um, which relates sort of to their religion and, like, the way they see the world and the way they process time. But, yes, yeah. they do. <laughs> their, their art, especially art that would not be still art, anything that might be experiential art or their mm-hmm. music, um, is going to be really fascinating. Mm-hmm. And if you have access to the dictionary, um, again, I'm not going to give anything too much away, I hope, but go look up the word al with a long A. Yeah. Al. And that, that's a hint about how very different their experiences of music and other things will be from um, what, what we experience typically mm-hmm. when we think about art and music. It'll be quite different, but I think it'll still be super fun for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we probably won't be able to experience it in exactly the same way that they can, mm-hmm. but I think it'll still seem super cool to us. Yeah, and th- those are the particularly Xi'an things. They share a lot of things aesthetically with us, too, like um, the way they approach fiber, fiber craft, um, their clothes and things. They can appreciate a lot of the same things we do, like an artful arrangement of patterns or, or jewels or like folds in the fabric or color. They're very into that as well. Um, so our idea from lore is approaching it in um, giving them something that does define them as alien, but also presenting some common ground because, you know, culturally we all, we all have, we both have eyes. We both can appreciate things in a kind of aesthetically pleasing way and it gives us common ground. And I think that helps in Xi'an human relations, which I hope improve moving forward. Yeah. I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. I can, I can always hope, right? That everything gets better. (laughs) But they have, they also have the ability, if you think about art and sculpture, to work with a lack of gravity that mm. we, we don't have right now, certainly, as we sit here uh, on Skype. Um, so they, there are all kinds of interesting things about um, what they could do with art and mm. the ways they could think about art that we are not completely capable of doing right now. So I think the experiences that you will have with art on Xi'an worlds should be, maybe some of them will be kind of mind-blowing. I hope so. Ooh. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I've been sitting here thinking about Xi'an karaoke happy hour <laughs> for the last two minutes. <laughs> you said happy hour? I think you mean happy week. Yeah, happy that's week. about right. Xi'an karaoke. Mm-hmm. Last week. You heard it here, folks. It's canon. Right. Well, this this beard came about from a terrible idea on on a broadcast. I think we can follow it up with Xi'an karaoke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, another question we've got here: um, How confusing are other languages to the Xi'an? Do they understand other languages? Um, <clears throat> that's a great question. I would say if you're talking about, you know, an everyday cook or an everyday you know, truck driver on a Xi'an world who's who's essentially bilingual, meaning they only speak the proper Xi'an language and then they speak the service dialect, mm-hmm. but they haven't had exposure to other alien cultures. There are a lot of things about their language and, you know, the way it works phonologically and other things that might make certain other languages challenging for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have the ridiculous advantage over us humans that they live for hundreds of years. So we might give ourselves 18 months or two years or three years to learn a language. They can spend 30 years Mm -hmm. 
studying a language without kind of blinking an eye, if you know what I mean. So, so 30 years applied to learning some other alien language is not a big, not a big deal for them. So that means not only can they become extremely fluent in other languages, but they can learn many, many more languages than we can. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, even if we're extremely linguistically talented, humans learn, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 languages. But a Xi'an could easily learn 100 languages Mm -hmm. because they have so much more time Mm -hmm. to apply themselves to learning it. Right. Spy, try, fear. There you go. <laughs> so, so there, there could be a, there could be a Xi'an that speaks fluent English. Yes. Oh, absolutely. There is I mean, one actually, Professor yeah. Tai. No. Yeah, I mean Professor Tai from the the language overview document is extremely fluent in English. Mm-hmm. I mean, he might have a slight accent. I haven't heard him talk yet. That's true. We haven't um, recorded his voice. So he might have a slight accent. They they do have a very very hard time voicing a th so it's hard for them to say there they're more likely to pronounce there as there Mm -hmm. it's very hard for them to make that sound um they they don't say the cat they say the cat i mean Mm -hmm. or the cat you know they have to find another sound Mm -hmm. because for some reason which is not yet completely clear to me either they have a really hard time pronouncing uh voiced T H on Ed of the. Hmm. Okay, uh, this is a question a little outside of Xi'an, but I wanted to <coughs> get our thoughts here. Uh, is there a common language that's spoken by all species? Uh, specifically, how would they manage intergalactic trade without it? The Banu, the Xi'an, the humans. I- is there a service dialect for everybody that's been developed over the next nine hundred years? Uh, that's something that I'm not sure about. That would be a question to ask Dave. We haven't really discussed. Dave! Um, we haven't really discussed having a, co- <laughs> a common standard language for everybody to speak. Um, if you ask me, I would probably, <laughs> like, like I, this is just my opinion. This isn't something yes. that we yes. haven't, this is something that we've established in lore as canonical fact. But for me, I think it would make sense for it to have a lot of Banu influence since the Banu are the species that have contact with literally everyone and have since, well, they can't remember because they don't really care about keeping historical records. So I think it would make sense for everybody to have at least like some meeting ground speaking Banu to each other. But that's, again, that's just what I think right now off the top of my head, which I think would be good. Um, As far as gameplay purposes are concerned, it's very likely that we'll just lean towards UEE standard. Um, just for the sake of fun so that everybody can participate in trading and everybody mm-hmm. can communicate with every other alien species. Uh, but in my heart of hearts, it's Banu. It's interesting. I was thinking mm-hmm. about, I like the Banu so much because I hate writing anything down. <laughs> but but y- y- you're all about writing everything down. How do the Banu not just drive you crazy? Uh, they don't really care about historical records, but they like to have a chill time. So I yes. like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, I am not aware of any um, UEE Esperanto at this point. So that's my only comment on this topic. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, do the Xi'an have particular taboos that we should be aware of? In, 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 anything, anything that would be a bad idea, you meet a Xi'an and like, don't do this, don't bow halfway, don't say... You know, happy, happy Father's well, Day. I don't know. <laughs> they wouldn't really. I mean, they'd be like, "Oh yeah, my my cool uncle. Yeah, happy day, to, happy day to him. He rules." But um, I suppose that they don't really understand our propensity towards emotional exuberance upon first meeting. They just think it's really weird that we act so enthusiastic and like really emotionally open when we've just met someone, and even in like early subsequent meetings, uh, because. In their culture, you only really show, like, who you are deep down and, like, what you were feeling about a situation once you've gotten to know someone over a long period of time. And once you get to that point, then they'll let loose with the jokes and they'll tease you and you'll tease them back and forth or they'll let loose with their opinion on something. But the fact that we do it so easily kind of put, it kind of puts them off. They don't really get it. 
Yeah, there are certain taboos. One I can remember that's called out in the language document is that if people don't talk about their biological father, don't ever ask. Like, you, you don't ask mm. someone, oh, right. who, is, who is your biological father, Mm-mm. if the biological father is not relevant to the Piaha and they're not there in the picture, you just don't ask about it. That's yeah. a, that's I would consider that a taboo. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's considered very rude to ask anybody about their family lineage. Like, it's, it's like, yeah, of course it's important to my life, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know what I would compare it to in uh, the culture that I'm immersed in. Um, it's just they also, weird. Yeah, they, it's weird. And <clears throat> so it's weird in the sense that the, the lines, the families, the houses are super important to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, it's kind of like everything because it determines so many things about your wealth and your potential in life, depending on which house you belong to. But it's, but it's considered rude to dwell on it. You know, it's considered yeah. rude to talk about it. So when you first Ooh. introduce yourself, mm-hmm. you you say, I am so-and-so of the so-and-so mm-hmm. line, and I'm a truck driver for a living. That's, mm-hmm. what, that's what you say. But then you don't talk about your last name. You mm-hmm. don't talk about your family name anymore after that first introduction. So yeah. that's very, that's different. And dwelling on that and asking too many questions about that or mm-hmm. referring to somebody repeatedly as, Oh, you're of the you're of House Twelve, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you're so and so of House Twelve, and talking about House Twelve and this and that about House Twelve all the time. That would be taboo. I mean, that would be rude. That'd and be super super rude. There would be some kind of odd kind of positioning going on if you were doing that. Yeah, yeah I guess I would compare it to um, if you come up to someone and they tell you, "Oh, I do such and such for a living." You shake their hand. So, how much money do you make? And then r- yeah. harping on about that over and over again. That's I think that's an apt comparison. Yeah, it would be. I mean, that's that that would probably is, be a similar type taboo. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody said, "Oh, you know, I'm so and so, and I'm a lawyer at X Y Z firm," and they're like, "Well, what's your compensation?" You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, like that were the next question. <laughs> that would be a similar kind of thing. How yeah. much do they pay you to do that there? You know, like, that would. Okay. That, would not, that would be a similar kind of <laughs> what? You know, that would that would that would not be good. Mm-hmm. I found myself thinking about how the Xi'an would translate that line from Arnold Schwarzenegger's Kindergarten Cop: "Who is your daddy, and what does he do?" <laughs> like that would be a maybe like, would not be a, a Xi'an translation. Mm-hmm. I'm contributing to this conversation what I can, which is very little. All right, what about well the Xi'an? The Xi'an would probably respond to that, Jared, a we, which means Mm -hmm. I am clueless. I don't know anything. (laughs) I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I do know. Uh, So you're saying I should learn that? A a, a we? 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 That's the only part. That's the only Xi'an I need to learn. Then a we? A we? A we means I don't know. A we? And we mean I don't know. If you're asking me, you're looking in the wrong place for the answer. That's mm-hmm. the yeah. What 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 is the uh, equivalent of no habla español? What 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 what, what is I, I don't speak Xi'an? It is probably uh, oyal or oyal lai washan. I cannot washan. I cannot. Mm-hmm. I cannot speak Xi'an. Oyal lai washan. Okay. Yeah. O yao lai. O yao lai. O yao lai. O shan. Yeah. O wa shan. Or my default phrase, which is a o nai. A o nai. A o nai. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I literally Jeez. didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then you would say a o nai noa uut or a o nai uut noa. I don't understand either. Mm-hmm. You're showing off, written. I somebody somebody has to know what's in the dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, I, 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 we've I've seen a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people in the chat. Uh, there, there are some people that have really taken to this though. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm trying to. Rem- there was one name I wanted to remember. Somebody oh. I wanted to call out. That was like just. Um, and we, we've seen all kinds of things. Uh, one person has cr- created a a a, 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 a font. Mm-hmm. We saw somebody creating a, a Shan language font. It's very cool. Uh, for you for you for you to install on oh. your computer. Uh, unfortunately, we can't support player to player installs on our website and stuff like that. But if you want to look for it and. Buyer mm-hmm. beware, mm-hmm. Uh, but it seemed very very cool. Yeah, um, um, someone has done some lovely illustrations. Songwing, 
Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we're highlighting those. Oh, they're those very cool. Those oh, are, man. Those are going to be on and Stars next <laughs> week. <laughs> the week after, maybe. Yes, the week after. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just been wonderful. Um, there, there, are, there is at least one other individual who can chat fluently. I'm not. I mean, I'll say fluently, as fluent as I am, certainly yeah. in the language mm-hmm. already. And it's been like a month. Yeah. You know, so less hmm. than I think. I'm I'm blown away. I'm mm-hmm. completely blown away. Yeah. So, um, returning to the subject of accomplishments of people. Yes. We need to announce the winners of the Xi'an Animal Naming Yay, event. Yes. Right. We're, there, we're there already. Yeah. Uh, now, now uh, start us off. We, we, we did a comlink post uh, mm-hmm. two weeks ago now? When we oh, no. We, deba- we debuted the comlink post this week on okay. uh, Monday. Monday. And, and, we and, did. And what was the, what was the contest? Um, the idea was we, we created these cool animals that are native to the area, the Xi'an Empire, um, three of them, to be precise. Josh came up with these wonderful creature designs, and Lore worked together to create uh, backstories and descriptions of the animals. Mm-hmm. And Brit had the idea that we invite the community to participate in the further development of the Xi'an language uh, through this collaborative, more or less, competition, where we had people submit um, names for the creatures, ideas of idioms, um, Using the the Xi'an language as we know it, and can, like constructing constructing words in a grammatically correct fashion, or coming up with new words as uh, the situation demands. And you can find this com link on robertspaceindustries dot com. Uh, if there's a mo- I see a couple mods in our Twitch chat. If somebody wants to drop the link into Twitch chat, I mm, would appreciate that. That'd be very nice. But you can find it just going to robertspaceindustries dot com. It's still on the front page, mm-hmm. so you can find it there. Uh, we have we we had three creatures. Right. Yes. All right. So uh, we've got this set up. Why don't we show? What, 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 which creature should we start on first? Should we start on the little buddy? No, we want to no. save him for last. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who, who should we start on? Oh, Fred? or who I we? mean, we can do the. Uh, let's do the wool bearing animal first because it's first on my the my list. Bearing, okay. <laughs> let's start with the wool bearing animal. Hold on, I've got I've got a, I got an image of the wool bearing animal here. Let mm-hmm. me bring this up. Now, oh look at that guy. Very cool. What 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 are those things coming out? Are those tusks? Yes. That's a good looking task. Yeah, yeah. I almost have like face paint. It's yeah. not fa- these animals <laughs> don't paint their faces. That's just natural. No, they're not. That's just natural coloration. Um, these, this is a domestic animal. It's been bred over a period of, I'd say, thousands of years at this point for the fineness of its coat. It produces a fabric that's somewhere between vicuña and silk. It's highly valued by Xi'an, and um, it's primarily produced by the, uh, the fashion house. House 12? Mm-hmm. House 12. Um, so, this important animal has been named. And it's obviously Goaty McGoatface, right? Yes, Goaty McGoatface, okay. absolutely. So, the name? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 Suggested by Benjamin Hopp. I'm not even going to try it. You guys say it. It's Mashun. Yeah, Mashun. Mashun, yeah. Mashun. And the, mashun. yeah. Mashun. And the, the Mashun, the Shun part of this is is what was so clever in the suggestion and that is that it's munching it's like a chewing or munching sound of the animal oh, eating the grass it's mm-hmm. it it eats grass or grain or whatever vegetarian food is available all day long <laughs> right. so we also now have a new word in the language a new tie a new element in the language shun which is to to munch or chew mm-hmm. particularly mm-hmm. while making sounds doing it so yeah. Jared, maybe maybe you could get good at shooting. Shoon, 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 shoon. Chewing with your mouthful. <laughs> yeah. Mashun. And so in uh, in UEE standard, this animal is known as the shun. It's kind of sort of like uh, we went with the idea that a lot of the Xi'an language, <clears throat> if it was if it entered the UEE standard dictionary, would be based on the sound of Xi'an, and it would come into uh, a kind of a phrase that would be easier for people who are speaking standard to understand or and pronounce. So. Although it is the mashun in Xi'an, it is shun in UEE standard. Um, shall we do honorable mentions real quick for the this guy while we're on the subject? Sure. Okay. So we each picked honorable mentions that we were we were both into. Um, Matuel is another one that was suggested by Kivo, I think, or Kiv Zero, which we we both liked a lot, and it almost it was almost picked. It came down to the wire. It was so close. It was so close. And we liked it because um, the idea that an animal would have a brand name or like if it was strongly associated with a house since houses are so important 
uh, in Xi'an culture, it seemed like it logically followed how we set up the culture. And um, it showed that the person did read the entire uh, letter from Thai overview of Xi'an language document because they named the correct they named the correct house, which is super awesome. Uh, we also liked Kinle, which uh, needed to be rearranged to be grammatically correct to uh, Le Ken, or mm -hmm. Le Ken, sorry. Yeah, uh, Le Ken. Which was uh, suggested by Sergeant Teddy Bear 59. <laughs> sorry. Good name. It's a great yeah, name. I just wasn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's a very straightforward, sensible, and short descriptive idea, like a tall head. And Sergeant Teddy Bear also came up with a great idiom that was uh, be, be like the wise Le Ken. Or Lekhen, with not with its head low, always eating grain, but also high above the tall fields, wary of danger. Excellent work. Mm -hmm. So creative. I mean, there's so much creativity in the entire contest. Oh, it's yes. amazing, yeah. amazing yeah. creativity. Yeah. Of course, the, the, there's three creatures for this contest, but we're not going to stop at three creatures <laughs> between however many Xi'an the worlds are. So, you know, maybe we stick a couple of these in our back pocket. It is, it is possible that we, we may do something like this again. Okay. All right. Um, What's I'm a, next? Yeah, let's do the uh, predator. Ooh, the apex predator. Bum, bum, bum. So let's see, we got this guy here. Oh, he's got big elbows. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Big, yeah, looks like big <laughs> everything. So when uh, Lore got this, we, we looked at the physiology and the claws and the fins and things on this, this creature and decided that it was an arboreal. A uh, tree dwelling predator that used its fins to uh, glide between. It doesn't truly oh. fly, but it does glide a little bit between trees and it uses its claws to latch onto branches. Um, it's quick, it's very quiet, uh, and it prefers to attack, you know, vegetarian prey because vegetarian prey is just like available. It's widely available. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't really like attacking other predators because it doesn't want to expend the energy to, to get into a full, you know, attack but it will it will attack if it's provoked or cornered gotcha. um and xian children are small creatures so no one really likes them being exposed to areas where this this guy is uh he's native to planet xi uh which is oh it's a kefa planet kefa kefa five if oh i, I think it's i think it's real wasn't it real oh it was real right. it five, was real yeah. sorry yes yeah it was real um one of the planets in real but it's highly endangered there but uh there is there is a uh stable population on the <laughs> this picture is big it, it, yes. anyway there's a stable population on Koli, which is an als the als system anyway let's uh let's get to it build the name and not these pictures of chickens with lips that were being sent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and there's yes. the, oh. the, terif the terrifying matokai, which literally means terror creating beast. So mm -hmm. it is it's a big scary fear monger, if you will. And mm -hmm. it, it you know, Sherry can explain exactly how we got the derivation. But um it's I I love this word, matokai. It just sounds scary to me in Xi'an if I filter it through my Xi'an mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, suggested by Kivo, which is, uh, Kivo came up with a couple of great suggestions, as we've already discussed. Um, this is, th we picked this specifically because it sort of, uh, as Britt said, suggested fear, which with its, uh, the, its rising and falling pitch, which is sort of uncommon in Xi'an, isn't it? Well, it's a it's a step down, so it goes yeah. ma to kai, and kai is low and low and long, mm -hmm. and kai kai is a word for the fear that you feel inside of you, mm -hmm. not something that terrifies you externally, not an external terror, mm -hmm. but the internal actual fear and panic that you feel. So this is a panic monger, this animal, it, mm -hmm. cre it creates panic within your within your heart, so to speak. Yeah, and like. The Xi'an, as carnivores, there are ma they, the ma ma matukiai doesn't really want to eat them too much, but it's still a dangerous creature, like we discussed before. It's still something you want to be wary of. And uh, Britt wrote something down here about like social pack creatures howling to their troop mates. It's near, it's near, which harkens back to the way the, uh, the word is constructed. Oh, there's chickens here now. Hi. Oh, <laughs> it's not, no, no, this is the preview. They haven't seen this yet. <laughs> oh, no. Spoiling the surprise. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's, go, let's, go, let's go to the third. Let's go to the third. Uh, oh, terrible. So the, the, the third creature we have is my favorite. It's, it's the little buddy. Mm-hmm. Tell us about this guy. 
This guy is an animal that's very common in Xi'an culture. It uh, domesticated itself as the Xi'an developed farming and their big fermentation or rotting houses that they use to make their food just so, so that they can eat it. And this little guy was uh, native to the waterways, like the rivers and streams and lakes that kind of that helped sustain uh, Xi'an village. And it would come up out of the water and eat the pests that would plague the uh, fermentation houses and the farmlands. And so after a long period of time, it more or less domesticated itself. And now it's, it's loved within Xi'an culture. It has a variety of coat patterns. Uh, they prefer this, this ginger here, which is, uh, uh, was it Hyun? Hyun. What? Unkuf. Un yeah, kuf is, kuf is a kind of yellowish term. Yeah, yeah unkuf. Yeah, so uh, this guy is... And, oh, yeah, and I also wanted to point out that because it's, it loves water still to this day, it doesn't live in water full time. It's more like an otter or a beaver where it likes to just go in and out whenever it wants to. Uh, and consequently, Xi'an find otters and beavers to be completely adorable, and they don't see what the big deal is with the other pets that we have. <laughs> I, I saw images of this on my Twitter feed all week with sunglasses. Oh yeah, and various <laughs> meme shapes. That's wonderful. Uh, people, people adopted this this little guy here. Good. Now I understand it, we've got we we have, we have more than one name for this. Is we this we do. On? We have more than one name. Let's um get to the official dictionary name of this guy. Nyi mm -hmm. Nyi. Yeah, yeah no. very good. Mm -hmm. Perfect pronunciation. Nyi 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 Nyi. Yeah. Nye. Yeah. Bring us a shrubbery. <laughs> it is it is the creature that says me. Well, <laughs> yes. maybe it no, says it something else. Sa it says something else, but we'll be getting to that yeah. shortly. <laughs> so the reason we picked this, it was suggested by Jail. Um, Jail brought up the point that an animal that's been involved in uh, Xi'an as a people this far would just would probably have a really simple word. It wouldn't be. Uh, a contraction between a bunch of descriptive words. It would just be a solid tie all on, all on its own. Uh, like we have cat and dog and wolf. Mm. Like we don't really think about the etymological origin of those words. We just know them. The word is the thing. And that is the big reason uh, why we picked this guy. I like that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes, but um, we were also very fond of something else. And it suggested uh, a kind of a cat-kitty dichotomy, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so we have a, like a naked nickname? We have a nickname. This is what Xi'an children would call it, or if you're feeling really affectionate, you would call it this. It's a Yao Yao. Yao Yao. Which was uh, suggested by uh, Raz Raz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yao Yao was suggested by Raz Raz? That's right. <laughs> I mean, you got to go with what you know, yeah. right? Yao Yao <laughs> suggested Raz Raz. Interesting. But I, Yao Yao is, it's common in a lot of cultures for there to be a kind of baby name or a, mm -hmm. a pet name, if you will, for a creature that you use when you talk to, to children about it. So Xi'an parents would probably be more likely to, to refer to a Nyi as a Yao Yao if they're talking to a small child about it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, if, they, if the little Xi'an kid is running around the house chasing the animal, they will probably say, leave the Yao Yao alone instead of leave the Yao Yao. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, JL also came up with a couple of really cool idioms that we wanted to share here, uh, which would be Yath eats like a Yangi. Oh, oh, UEE standard name for this would be Yangi. It's easier for our, for a lot of us to say. And oh, I forgot to mention the name of the predator in UEE standard would be um, Tokyai. Yeah. Anyway, so let's go back to this. And the definition of Yath eats like a Yangi would be Yath eats quickly and quietly. And Jail also came up with Tholan has a deep knowledge of a Yangi, which is sort of sarcastic in that they're, they're not like incredibly intelligent. They're smart enough in that they, you know, they can hunt and they want to be entertained. They're kind of on the level of cats. But Yangi do sit in your house all day watching you. <laughs> so this metaphor kind of implies that Tholan is a gossip and obsessed with the personal lives of everybody. So... So. Yeah, you so you say you're not you you say that he's deep like a yingi, but in reality, what you're saying is he's not so deep. You know, he's mm -hmm. more concerned with he's more concerned with all the the gossipy stuff that's going on mm -hmm. around the house as opposed to the profound philosophical artistic pursuits. All right. Oh, um. Well, well, well if we were busy. <laughs> <laughs> 
while we were doing work, uh, uh, somebody I work with who won't, I won't name was sending us pictures of chickens with lips. So okay. this is who uh, we are now. This is who we are now. I hope you accept our new lives. Um, I for we forgot to do honorable mention for the predator and the uh, pet for the uh, matukiai oh, yeah. and the ni. So I want to run over those real quick. Um, so honorable mentions for the predator. Uh, one of them was Carlan's suggestion of tiatu, uh, which what would be the correct way of saying that, Britt? Oh, for benevolent predator. Benevolent, probably. Um, Mm, yeah, Maputleya or, you know, Yalma Maputleya mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And we picked it because it was one of the only positive descriptions of the Predator. Everyone else focused pretty pretty strongly on fear, which is, of course, natural. But I liked this entry because it was uh, unique and had a, had a more interesting take um, as a, this Predator as something that's respected and revered rather than something that's outright feared like a boogeyman. Yeah. So yeah. excellent work by Carlon. Um and we also liked um dis uh Distrier's suggestion, which was initially presented as Ho Yi Sao Vathnya, um, which would be more correctly pronounced as uh Ma uh Ma O or Ma Yeah, Ma Ra yeah. Hmm. It sounds right. To me. Ma Ratho. Um which cleverly combines the ideas of descending and pouncing and silence and stealth. So that was quite that was quite a good idea excellent work to distrier and uh let's just dive right into the pets because we're basically out of time but we want to get this out real quick mm -hmm. uh wid's idea w-i-d-d-e i hope i'm pronouncing that right is either wid or widda it's a mystery uh nemi which is a new tie sort of like the knee idea you know, like we got into earlier, animals would have probably, older animals would probably have simpler names with no etymological uh, immediate association. And Bear Clops also suggested Makuthlun, which was Ma precious. And it's, it's, it's basically slams together the idea of um, it's an animal, which is the Ma thing. And Kuthlun is the, like, the ginger the ginger pattern. The ginger and a kind of deep connection to a kind mm -hmm. of, you know, my little yellow heart mm -hmm. beast or something like that. So, so it's nice. it's very warm and friendly mm -hmm. and fuzzy and yellow. Mm -hmm. Good job, bear clops. Yeah. So this would probably be what you wanted to name your uh, yow yow. If I had a yow, I had a yow. Oh. Oh. I would name it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you became a robot just yeah. now. Yeah, Skype. Well, your 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 dial your it's over Skype. Did you change your mic setting or anything? Or no, I oh, you're question. back to normal. You're back. There you go. Good job, all right. Skype. Mm -hmm. Good Thanks, job, Skype. Skype. All right. So that uh, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, your names were excellent. So thank you for uh, Benjamin Hop for Mashun. Thank you to Kivo for Matokai. Thank you to Jail for Nyi. and thank you to Razrez for Yao Yao. Those what, are wonderful names. What did Sergeant Teddy Bear do? Uh, Sergeant Teddy Bear did Leken, which okay. is the uh, the wool animal gotcha. with the tall, the tall head that's always Tatanka. looking out, looking out, being wary. Tatanka. Mm -hmm. Or maybe these are the little little fangs. Mm -hmm. Here's, yeah, your, here, here's yeah. your screenshot. Here's your screenshot, everybody. Perfect. That's it. The fangs. Mm -hmm. Fangs plus the horns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that about wraps up this week's episode of the Happy mm. Hour uh, Community Show. Thank you for watching. Uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, housekeeping announcements before we let you go. Mm -hmm. um, the anniversary special, the thing that we do every year celebrating the completion <laughs> of our original uh, crowdfunding <laughs> campaign, uh, the the schedule for it has just been published during this broadcast so you can check that out that of course is up on robertspaceindustries.com uh you'll see all, you'll see uh, uh many of the f the festivities that you, that uh, that are going to proceed for the next uh, essentially two weeks um not all of them but many of them there might be a couple surprises mm -hmm. here and there maybe maybe so so check that out um we're basically bringing back a lot of your favorite ships and uh, throwing out a couple new ones and i the word couple is correct um, and of course, uh, check out, uh, there will be a daily video. Uh, we, we are doing an ATV special every single day of the sale. So you want to come on back to, uh, to YouTube. We won't have a happy hour next week, uh, but there will be an eight, there will be seven days, mm -hmm. eight days, seven or eight days of ATV goodness for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I can't remember how many because it's, oh, 
consuming my entire life right now. So they're all one big glob there. So, so look forward to that next week. And, uh, yeah, so thank you so much, uh, Britain, for joining us from, 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 from Planet Shion. Is that what we said? No. Well, uh, so, Ryla, so, Ryla 4? Oh, I think it's 5. Ryla 5? Yeah, I'd rather be on Coley. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hanging out with all the cool animals in the gardens. <laughs> and thank you, of course, Sherry, for taking the time out of your day to be here. Hello. Uh, we'll see you next time, everybody. Take care. Goodbye. Yeah, Thanks for coming. Thanks a lot. Just gotta stop the show now. Yeah, just stop it. It's fine. Just it's gonna be gonna, gonna hit stop.